rotate your phone. Chapel. Our service is a little bit different as we celebrate Palm Sunday. We're going to open with the singing of the Holy City. Minor technical difficulties there. We're going to open with the singing of the Holy City, and it tells the story of the Palm Sunday experience, and then we will um, have the uh, responsorial psalm, and then we will go into the gospel reading.
Let us pray. God, we come to you in this hour of worship to remember before you this day our Savior, Jesus Christ, who entered into Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday, triumphantly coming in as a king. And we know the joys that the people shared, and we know how life changed. Keep us ever mindful of your love for us. Help us and guide us and protect us with your might as we offer ourselves to your service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 154. We'll sing verses 1 and 2.
passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered again, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. The whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole co cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked, mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani which means, my God, 
my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs, after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. make 
his journey easier. And we see that as the world was celebrating the Passover and he was with the people that he knew and loved, he experienced humanity and his spiritual being, the presence of God in his being all at once. We see his humanity. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Knowing that he had done the best he knew how. Knowing that he had been an example of God's love to humanity. Haven't we all said that in the past week or two? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As we listen to the TV, and the news reports of people dying by the hundreds throughout the world. And the world is cast into the valley of the shadow of death. And we're uncertain as to what to do because there's confusion. There's anxieties. There's all kinds of frustration and all kinds of advice. Jesus saw the persuasion of political influence. Jesus saw the betrayal of a close friend. Jesus felt abandoned. But yet Jesus never gave up the stamina of his own spirit until the very end, when he knew that his body could no longer continue. Even when the two thieves that had ridiculed him and mocked him, and the soldiers that ridiculed him and mocked him, even when those two thieves said to him these terrible, terrible things, he said, before this day is over, we shall be in paradise. He didn't say, I shall be in paradise. He said, we shall be in paradise. Which is the promise that we all were given at that moment. That paradise is offered to all of us. That beyond this earthly dwelling of a body lies a spiritual habitat of comfort and peace. And he went on to prove that through the resurrection. As we go through the confines of the coronavirus, we truly are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We get all kinds of mixed messages on what we should do and what we should not do. But one thing I know we should do is pray that we will endure. That our world will continue after this ends. There will be a resurrection of life in the world. And life will go on because that's the promise that God made to us. And that's part of the spirit that dwells in us. This morning, I, in my bulletin that I send out each morning, I wrote a little message called The Pit of Despair. And as I stood on the pit of despair, I could see all the anxieties and the frustrations and all the contempt and all the anger and everything that was dwelling in the pit of despair. But I turned and saw family and friends. And I began to walk down the road of hope. And as I walked down the road of hope, I was walking with family and friends who were walking with me. And I envisioned myself walking with people that I had seen as spiritual people in my life. And we 
smiled and we laughed. We cried. We shared good times. We overcame the bad times. And we continued to walk, and there were strangers there. But yet there were people just that I hadn't met yet. And way beyond that road was a rainbow and the promise of life after the storm. And I believe wholeheartedly that time passes very quickly and soon we'll reflect back on these times as our parents did with World War II, our parents did with the Great Depression, our grandparents. And we will have stories to tell our children and our grandchildren. And it won't all be about darkness, sadness. It'll be about determination and joy and comfort and peace brought to us because of the goodness that dwells in each of us. This morning as I was doing my prayers, I was thinking about all the doctors and nurses and all the people I know that have been in the medical field. I was thinking of a friend of mine who's a physician assistant, Tim, and how tired he must be. The doctors and nurses and how tired they must be. And as I know so many nurses, they had this ability to keep going beyond what seems to be human understanding. But they persevere because they had a calling. And if you have a calling, you have to fulfill that calling. So let us all have a calling to be kind to our friends and our neighbors, to not get so caught up in panic that we behave in a way that is against our own human behavior. Let us trust that even as Jesus faced execution, that he still touched his own goodness. So let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Our offertory is number 32, and we will sing just the first verse.
we ask your blessing upon this bread and this wine that it may become for us. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we ask God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of this Holy Communion as we pray for all of Christ's church and the world. You may sit or kneel. God, we come before your altar this day asking for forgiveness for any sins or offenses that we have done against you, our God, against your creation, against our neighbors, or against ourselves. We ask forgiveness for these, our sins. We give thanks for all that you have given us, for our family and for our friends, for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth, as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. Jenny Redsicker, Alyssa Vanderpool, Dorothy Middaw, Donna Lesh, Beth O'Donnell, Joe Brennan, Steve Frazier, Ann Price, Galios Moika, Connie Siapa, Nancy Zamoyski, Kathy Garrett, Katie Ahart, Katie Smith, Larry Pataki, Jackie Pataki, TJ Hart, Barry Craddock, Amanda Barassi, George Bowen, Jerry Gentilly, Sal Giannino, Cynthia Halstead, Cindy Burdick, Helen Winters, Patricia Lapierre, Terry Collins, Joseph Robert Cass, Ward Hungerford, Jack Carr, Richard Vinskoy, Dominique Leone, Gloria Kunzman, Bob Wilcox, Dan Jackson, Mary Burkle, Greg, Lawrence Gibson, Lori Glow, Diane Craig, Martha Brewster, Bill Palmer, Sally Marks, Ed Gilbert, John, Geraldine Peters, Michael McKee. We trust your faith that you will touch them with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially this day for your servant Dick Halstead. We trust your faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received him into your heavenly kingdom. Be with his family and friends as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins, and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins, so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Acknowledge peace to one another, but keep your distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he shared it among his friends. And he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. <coughs> Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies, in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our faith and our love of you, that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us. Following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray. Gifts of God for the people of God, taken in remembrance that Christ died for you, feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Those who would like to share, if you would come forward.
pray. God, we give you thanks that you have fed us with the spiritual food of the blessed body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Send us out into the world, giving us the things to do that are necessary for your creation. As we offer ourselves to him who died and rose again, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to be with us in the days of head, ahead. As we travel through darker times, keep us ever mindful that your love warms our hearts, that the love that you have provided for us with family and friends, that we embrace that love, and if we can't be near them physically, we can be near them spiritually. Keep us ever mindful of our world. Instill your wisdom upon those in authority that we may do the right thing to overcome this virus. Be with our servicemen and women. Harbor them in safety until they safely return home. We pray that we may take your spirit through us out into the world to share your love in creation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh God, as you are with us this day, and we remember before you the triumphant ride into Jerusalem, where palm branches were waving, People were joyful. Keep us ever mindful of the joys that come with life. Help us to get away from the negativity of life, but to dwell in the positive things. But most of all, the love that you have provided for us. As we take these palms out of this church into our homes, we pray that the blessing that comes with them will bestow upon us a wonderful year ahead and guide us through this difficult time. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We ask your blessing upon these palms in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may he be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Our closing song is number 153, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.